Assalamu alaikum guys, hope all's going well. In this video I'll be talking about the fifth main data structure in Python, strings. Now this may be a surprise for some of you who recently started learning Python, or you may have found that strings are also data structures when working with them, say by slicing out characters or words. I've talked in detail about strings in episode 2 and mentioned that they can be seen as placeholders for individual characters. Keeping this in mind, you'll see that strings are also a collection of items like other data structures with their own unique ways of storing and managing data, the items being the characters stored inside here. You're probably familiar with slicing strings, which is done the same way for tuples and lists by specifying an index position of the item you'd like to get in squared brackets. This is a common method between strings, tuples, and lists, however they all differ in many other ways, like replacing or deleting items. So I can't, for example, use item assignment to replace a character, say H and hello with the letter F. Printing this will show an error in the console. Similarly, by applying the delete keyword to remove H from this string would give a deletion error below. Knowing this, you can see that strings are kind of like tuples, being an immutable collection of items, i.e. characters, but strings have their own methods for replacing or removing items. You may be familiar with the replace method, which we can also use to remove characters, like H by replacing it with a blank here, and then confirming this with a print in the console. Cool. So you can see that a string is really just another data structure, and we can also iterate through its characters with loops. By trying for i in string, print i, and running the program, will show that each character gets printed out per iteration from the string. Sweet. And you may be familiar with concatenating strings. If I used the plus operator with the letter k here, we'd get a result of characters joined with k in the console here. Alright. Now there's one thing I haven't mentioned about strings in previous tutorials, using the star operator with them. So by multiplying each character here with 2, printing this out will show a character now repeated as two characters of itself. So in a sense we did multiply a character by 2 here. Using 3 would just do the same but repeat each character in 3's as shown in the console. Cool. And there's one method I haven't mentioned for strings in previous videos, which is split. So I'll first remove my loop code here, and let's check out what happens with our string when printed out with split. You'll find in the console that our string converted to a list of characters. If I apply the character as a parameter in split, maybe w, you'll find that we get a list again in the console, but now containing two items, where you can see hello and the word world without w. Basically split literally split our string from w, leaving us with the remains from the original string. Alrighty. Now a few seconds ago we applied the star operator to multiply a character into repeated characters. Doing the same for our full string by 3 here, we'll show in the console hello world repeated in 3's. If I had a list however, say with just one item, and if I multiply this list by 5, printing this out will show our list now containing 5 items of the same number. Now let's try doing the same with the tuple, using normal brackets instead. Printing this out will just show 5 in the console. And this is because normal brackets with just one item is not really considered a tuple in Python. This would be read the same as the number without brackets. I missed out mentioning this in my tutorial on tuples and sets. So a tuple is a collection of at least two items. An extra number here for example will now make this a real tuple. By running the program, you'll see repetitions of 1 and 2 5 times in the new tuple here. So there are 10 numbers in this tuple. Sweet. You can see that some ways of working with strings can also be applied on other data structures. The star operator example would only work with ordered collections. So it can't work on a set for example, using curly braces here, and running the program will show an error in the console. And this is the same case with dictionaries, since a set and a dictionary are unordered collection of items. Now I'll post up a comparison chart of our data structures. This may help you revise on some similarities and differences between the structures. The image link will be in the description below. And that's all for this video. Just a little talk I wanted to give about strings being also a type of data structure. In the next video I'll probably go into some built-in functions that can be used on iterables and maybe look at applying sequence comprehensions.
I hope you found this video useful. If it was, give it a like or a subscribe, and hoping to see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an awesome day. Take care, and assalamu alaikum.